In my lab, we use brain imaging and other methods, including behavior, to understand how humans extract information about other people. So that might include gender, or race, or age, or emotion, or personality characteristics. Our unconscious biases can actually impact the visual perception of another person. What we showed in one study was that for faces varying in race, so we had faces varying from white to black, and we surrounded those faces by either low status attire, such as janitor attire, or high status attire, such as business attire, due to stereotypes in the United States that link African Americans to low status and link Caucasians to high status. What we found was that people's stereotypes in that context impacted uh, whether individuals categorized a face as white or black. But what we showed with the mouse tracking data was that even when participants arrive at the same decision about a face, they all say that this face is white or black, we could see for fractions of a second that the clothing and their stereotypes and what they were expecting to see stereotypically was changing that process, suggesting that their visual perception was sort of temporarily impacted by these stereotypes. A lot of research has suggested that we form spontaneous judgments of other people without much conscious awareness. And so what we wanted to examine was what are the neural mechanisms that underlie this, these perceptions of other people that might occur without conscious awareness. So we put our subjects into an MRI scanner. In the MRI scanner, they are viewing faces that are presented subliminally so they're not aware that they're seeing these faces um, that varied on facial trustworthiness. There are cues that seem to reliably relate to a face's trustworthiness, and those include furrowing of the brows, and then also the sort of a baby faceness or large eyes, and an upward turning of the lips. So the more trustworthiness cues or the more signal that's available on a face, that implicit signal, the stronger the amygdala responded to that, despite the fact that participants weren't even consciously aware that they were seeing faces at all. Sometimes when you're doing things in the field of uh, social neuroscience, naturally there's that kind of fuzzy line between personal and, and research that I actually like.